I hope this is the right track. It is. Okay, here we go. Some are drinking endless rosé. How are these fuckers not all in AA? Pretty people with booming careers. Lover boy, enough to last seven years. Do, 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 do. Hamptons clubs don't activate hubs in the out uh, of oh, the summer house. Oh well, oh well, Sing oh it well. With us. Tell me more, tell me more. Will they take Hannah's calls? Can we see Carl's three balls? Shoot bop bop, 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 yeah. You guys, they're saying there's a hurricane coming. Should we leave tonight? I don't know. It, it's a hurricane. No, we're going to play Beach Ball. Maya is the only voice of reason in this episode. She is. Like, full stop. She really is. <laughs> she really is. She really is. I'm with Maya a little bit on this. However, if there was a if there was a tornado warning, we would be playing. Uh, we would be playing for sure. Yeah. I mean, did y'all? What well, guess y'all? What get, what bothers you? Were because we used to look at storms. We'd go out. You know, we'd get under the roof if there was lightning, so nobody got struck. I think a but, hurricane. No, you know what? That's different in the south and in, in South Carolina. If you're like, I'm gonna wait it out. Well, yeah, yeah, that's but what you do. Hurricanes didn't really affect y'all because y'all are inland. So We're much. too far. Uh, Is there any inland. natural disaster that y'all would that y'all were used to? Blizzards. Um, all of them. All of them were used to. You just weather it. But it, it, and Maya's like, yeah, there's a hurricane coming. They're like, oh, who cares? Who cares? It's- but but hurricanes have been so, like, strong the last couple of years. I think this yeah. was Hurricane Henry, Henri, they said. I don't know. I think that's what they said. Henri. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Tell them about, um, do the announcements while I'm looking it up. <laughs> do the announcements. Y'all, y'all, this is Summer House. This reality oh, yeah. game says Summer House. It is Summer House. This is, what is this? Picture Mike Condom. How did oh, you just long. add it to? Season six, episode 11, Hurricane, hurricane Warning. Hurricane Warning. Hurricane. Hurricanes in, in hardly ha- happen ha- in Hutch, Hartford, Harrington, and Hampshire. Hurricanes hardly ha- happen. Ha- um, y'all... We're out on the road. We're, 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 th- we're actually, we are, we're newly recovered from Miss Cova. Um, we newly recovered. By the okay, so it was in August, Tropical Storm Henry. It never became a hurricane. It was a tropical storm. Okay. So it was once a hurricane, but it weakened from a category Got downgraded. One. So you know what? Where I'm from, we would have been like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. It, but it was seemed like they're like, yeah, let's go play volleyball. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was a lot of rain. Oh, my. Uh, yeah. You're all. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, voice um, of reason. So y'all come see us on the road this week. We are, we're newly, newly uh, over COVID. Um, we are. That got us this week. We were, we were fine. Just some low energy. Um, Very low energy. And <clears throat> we, we, my voice is a little creaky. Um, a little bit raspy. A little bit. We're gonna have some cough drops, and we might be coughing a little bit, but we're doing the best we can. Yeah. Um, we go. We, the shows for <sighs> Boston and Philly are already rescheduled on the fifteenth and sixteenth. Luckily, so. Poodle's last day of quarantine is tomorrow. Mine yep. was today. Yours is tomorrow, and uh, we're happy to be there. We're gonna now. We probably will wear a mask during the meet and greets, just because some of you are not you know, quarantine. We we aren't out of quarantine for. Uh, five day quarantine for a long no, time. No, the ten day quarantine. The ten day for the mask. That's where yeah. So now yeah. I can go out and just breathe air. Is that without a mask? Is that called a quarantine? Uh, my sister in law called okay. it a quarantine. But the five but days at, at home. We did five it's days. The CDC. Yes. Um, but we're gonna wear a mask on our meeting greets just because some of you can be immunocompromised, and we yeah. just want to make sure. Exactly. The little miss that little Wuhan bat doesn't just <laughs> fly on out. And hey get y'all. You. <laughs> hey y'all so anyway that's what's going on we're excited oh uh good. we'll see you in dc with mary Payne and aaron from pink shade big news we can announce this now we have special guests in atlanta 
Besides my brother and my sister in law and a couple yes. friends that'll be there, they're not going to be on stage. They will be in the in the seats. Yes. Uh, you won't be able to know who they are, though. You probably will. You will he looks because like Jake me. looks. <laughs> Jake's brother looks just don't, like. Don't him. approach my brother. Uh, He'll get freaked the fuck out. He'll just get call him. The fuck out. Call him straight, Jake. That's what I call him. He likes oh, it. God. He's a Pisces like me. We like talking to people. We're not a fickle he, Libra he, he like you. He does like talking to people. We do. Your brother and I are very much alike. Mm. We're literally born a day apart or two days apart. Two days. Yeah. We know exactly what to do to drive Poodle crazy. That's true. You do. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's so our, our Atlanta show, we have... Molly and Cynthia. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Molly's going to come talk to so us. I am excited, very excited to have Molly and Cynthia. Uh, so Molly and fun. Cynthia, uh, owners of Libby Ray. Libby Ray. That's what, exactly. If we had time, we'd go we'd get do some panties, fitting. but we don't <laughs> wear panties and we don't have I don't have big enough boobies. We don't. We don't have big enough boobies. So, uh, but yeah, it's all, it's all very coming exciting. together. And Nashville... This weekend, then Boston and Philly, the following week. I know, I keep telling my... We do realize that Boston and Philly was on... As one of our sissies said, they in Boston, they said, Well, thank God my family canceled Seder. I wouldn't be able to go. We rescheduled. Because... Um, um, those dates. We appreciate... Because we didn't realize it was on Passover and Easter. We're just defending everyone. <laughs> Good Friday and Good Passover. Friday. Good Friday and Passover, Yes. And Easter is on you're, Sunday. You're so. screwed the, the, that entire air, that time. Exactly, so. y'all. And what who is need, more... Who needs family gatherings? Who needs family guys? And what's more religious than seeing some gay men talk about <laughs> dicks? Right? <laughs> it's the way Jesus would have wanted it. You know that's how the Last Supper went down. Yes, he was like, hey, girl. <laughs> hey, girl, who's coming to my party on Saturday? Who's, who's having the orgy after this? Yes, please. <laughs> oh, John, I know that look in your eye, girl. <laughs> We're going to have somebody leave us a bad review and said, they talked about Jesus. I'm leaving. We did have somebody say that yeah, once. Yeah, someone left. And they left. I think it was a matter of time for that person anyway. Yeah. Yeah, we're not yeah. your show. Yeah, I agree. Anyway. Um, but we're really excited. Come see us live, y'all. We, and when we, when we finish this little mini April tour... We'll probably be announcing other, our second tour, probably that'll happen in the fall very soon. Um, well, we're doing some in the summer. We haven't announced that yet. You keep saying, you keep, she, you, you said that our booker said fall in October, and then now, now cause you said no, the, fall, the, but aren't we doing some in the summer? We're going to be doing some in June. I don't think that's, No. Oh, we're not now? Never mind. Y'all, I just wake up every day and just everything's a bright you new world. You just castigated me because you said, no, in the fall, our last thing. No, not in the fall. I thought we we're doing two, like we're doing a little thing in the summer. In Let's June. not talk about it. We don't have the facts. We don't have the facts. That's a dang truth. Until you see tickets on sale, <laughs> we're talking of our ass. That- and now I'm all confused because I t- my mind says Boston Philly's done because I'd planned it after. DC. Well, you need to tell your mind otherwise. Well, you know it's How got hard COVID is that mind. To I'm trying to think here. Jesus. Anyway, y'all. So lots going on. We're excited. Um. And, oh, hey. First of all, pig royalty. We're really enjoying it. It's getting better and better and better. Check that out on April sixth. Probably when this show already came, by the time you hear this, the ultimatum on Netflix drops. The ultimato. We're uh, we're definitely spin off of Love Is Blind. Yep, we're definitely covering that show. The first two episodes are going to be on this free feed for y'all, so you can try before you buy, and then if you want to listen to the rest, that'll be at the five dollar tier on our, our Patreon. Patreon or Supercast. So we're hoping to get those out soon. The show is dropping on Wednesday, and then we are <laughs> literally traveling on Wednesday and have a, 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 a busy a busy four days, and then we're home for three days. Jake's got a show, and then we're back on the road again for another, like, three days. Yep. So we are going to try to get to it as soon as possible, but it might be I a hot I just wish minute. we could do podcasts on the airplane, oh. but we can't. 
I, I don't know why we don't have a private plane. That would solve like so Emma many. from Selling Sunset. Yes, like Emma. She from has Selling, to travel with her dog, which that's coming back this month too, right? April twenty second. Yes. So we've got so many things going on, and it all could be solved with a private plane. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. If you own a private if plane, you want to lend us reality gaze a plane. Yeah. Just let us know. And you've got a pilot and jet fuel, too. And you're going to play, you're the pay for the gas. Yeah, let us we know. Can't We're happy to use your private plane. <laughs> Please. We're going to take it off your hands. Well, yeah. You I, a, I can fly it. How hard could it be? If you need a, if you need a tax <laughs> write off and you want to give us your private plane for you to sponsor, I will do that. If Captain Sandy can, can drive a boat, I can fly a plane. Sure. <laughs> It'll go great. I'm sure there's a, most of it's automatic anyway. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be a new plane. It's probably not going to have cruise control. Is that what this <laughs> called? Is that what it's called on planes? Autopilot. Autopilot. What did I call cruise, cruise control? control? It's the same thing. That's what Speed 2 was called. It was. <laughs> and Sandra Bullock, I just saw the interviewer. She was like, wish I didn't make that movie. Oh, did she say that? She did say that. Yeah, Keanu respectfully declined that one. <laughs> Not Sandra Bullock. It was, uh, it was, wait. Speed Jason two, Patrick. Uh, speed 2, was that cruise control? But it was, wait, it's cruise control. Speed 2, colon, cruise control. But it was on a boat. It was on a boat. The boat oh, cruise, couldn't stop moving. Cruise, because they're on a cruise. The boat wouldn't stop yeah, moving. That, boy, I'm glad you got that. I never heard, I never saw any of the I didn't speed. see, I just know that Speed 2, cruise control, Starred Sandy Bullock and Did you Jesse see Cruise Patrick. Control or no. Speed One? No. I saw Speed One. Oh, I did not. How do you <laughs> avoid that movie? I don't know. I just didn't. I didn't see it that time. But n- no, these are watershed movies. <laughs> Again. Sandy Bullock's not gonna do any more movies now. She said she wants to just pause. Uh that's a lie. She'll be back. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Uh, They'll offer her Miss Congeniality Five. The Lost and City she'll... looks fun. I have to say, it looks fun. Yeah, I'm not interested in seeing movies that look fun. What's wrong with that? <laughs> A good feel good Adam Project. Good feel good no, movie. My, my thing is, there's too many. There's too much great television right now. There is. There is. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm. I seem to be more disappointed by movies. Um in the 21st century than I used to be. So television seems to do better. Yeah, I get that. And it's easier to quantify in some ways. There are some fantastic movies. Yeah. Um, I really loved, uh, I did, like I said, I loved Lost Daughter. I loved... Um, well, I think it's what you want out of a movie. I think some people, uh, I, I don't think the... The loss, you, <laughs> I I like I like you heavier like, fare for you, movies. Yes, you like to feel pain uh, when I you do. watch a movie. I do. I don't think I think some people just want to watch. And when the, I have sex, yes, some people just want to watch the Lost City and turn their brain off and have a fun. Like you know, it's like watching. That's I thought to get pounded for two hours. Yeah, <laughs> it's like when that show on Netflix, The Floor Is Lava, came on. I burned through that. I loved it. Oh, because it's just mindless watching. It's really funny because it's people thinking they know it's all what we do is going. I can make that if I just jump. And it's like it combines a, 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 a like a course, a, a, a game show. Uh, uh, what's it called? Where you're moving Riveting. on a course, moving on a course. I don't that? know. And of course, but with like wipeout where people fall and land in. Wa- and it's just so good. We need to move on. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Already 15 minutes of nothing. Um, y'all, we're talking about Summer House. We're just now talking about the show. This is post uh, drink uh, or glass throw. Glass that throw. Sierra, this, is, this is the Sierra um, Lindsay There be There's even a PA from set. We don't really see them a lot, but the guy in a walkie came and, and escorted so, Sierra out. So this is my question. Let's see. It seems like this fight got over pretty quick and there weren't a lot of people saying, cause remember the Hannah fights and when and Amanda threw a glass at Hannah and it wasn't. So maybe the fact that when Hannah's not in the house, there's less, 
drama from from fights that are left over. This was this was resolved relatively quickly. I think Han- maybe we didn't see a lot of the the of this. Maybe I think Hannah's anger is on another level. Yeah. Also, but this a glass broke. Sierra threw broke a glass broke. With Dan- there's glass everywhere. We haven't had glass breaking like this. I think it. I think why it got resolved quickly is because Sierra immediately felt shame for what she did and took herself out of the situation. And yeah, and felt and felt bad for it and felt remorseful. Hannah didn't really feel that right. remorse thing. No, Not I much. agree with you. But I, no, I'm just saying it was really quick how this was handled. It was very quick. And it's almost like... I'm surprised it was squashed this quickly. Yeah. And I feel like it had to do with what we did not see was Lindsay going after Sierra or Danielle going after Sierra to finish anything. It's almost like that had been done and everyone was like, whoa, this was too far. And in previous Summer House, y'all, that's why I consider this fight a dud. (laughs) It was. It, it just, flamed out quickly. It flamed out so quickly. There have been so many great fights, and at Summer House, and so much throwing, and yeah. and it was just like, it's not that I wish for violence. Um, Again, unless it's in the bedroom. Unless it's in the bedroom, but I was kind of like, it, there's there was su- there was such strong feelings on Sierra's side that I expected. More, it's almost like she, as soon as she got it out, then all she could, it, there was this clarity that came really quick that she's like, I should not have done that. I think it's one of those things where you, where she like put herself out there and went too far. As yeah. she said, I lost my shit. I've done that. I think we've done that where you get so mad, you scare yourself. Yeah, there, and there's I something think, to that. I think that's what happened. I think she scared herself and went, wait a minute, this is not who I am. This right. is not who I want to be. And even Maya, like, again, Maya This was, was so great. Again, Maya was the voice of reason and great. But Maya was a great friend to her because Maya came to her and she was like, that's not you. And this is, n- I will that's say this. you do. Paige would not have given her this kind of tough love. It was good tough love. Was Craig, yes. Right. Because, yes. and, well, and Maya said, Maya said, this is not the way you handle this conversation with Lindsay. And she said, I'm going to tell you this. Don't let Lindsay get the best of you. Don't let her get the best of you. Um, and she's like, here's why. And she laid it out to you guys. Laid it out. She's never going to hear you. The newest person in the house knew yeah. what was going on. Well, Maya's kind of an outsider, so she can have a little bit of a, a view on the yeah. people. And she went... She's never going to be able to give you what you need for she this. She literally said what we said last week. Yes. She's never going to. She said she is never going to see the issues. And I think that's so. And you know, what I, what I was she's never going to give you what you want. What I was going to say is if Maya had said this to, to uh, Sierra, Sierra earlier instead of, page. instead of Paige escalating this trying to weaponize Sierra's anger towards Lindsay. We would have had a very different outcome. It was a little bit. I was a little, I'm glad, but also I was a little bit, wait a minute, Paige. I know Craig's there, but you like, you like got Sierra you, all riled. You, you fomented told, this. You told her to talk to her and then she explodes and goes to the room and you don't go check on nope. her? Nope. Nope. And maybe nope. you did and we didn't see it, but I was a little bit like, friend foul, friend foul. Is that a new term or are you just coming up with it? I just said it. I kind of like it, I know. It, you, I, you said it twice, so I, you were trying to make it happen. No, no, I just said it. But <laughs> you know what? I am making it happen. It was a friend foul. We're using it from now on out of spite. You can take that. No, I like how you... We've like, got a new like, segment on reality games called friend foul. I like, I like how you hear something and you go, no, I like that. Friend foul. Friend foul. <laughs> we are clowns. We are. Um, we so, are. But no, I just, I, I want to just, it was so clear to me how Maya saw, and she even saw it happening, and she, and Maya has been, she'll be on Sierra's side until something gets to the point where she's like, okay, that might be in your head. 
She's um, very just pragmatic. And and she's like, and she's right. Lindsay will never be able to understand her side because Sierra's going with all of her feelings that she expect she for Sierra, that was eleven days she spent with Austin. Uh, Felt like four months of yeah. romantic bliss. And with someone like Lindsay, Lindsay's like, that was 11 days. I've known Amber that long. Craig does provide, we'll talk about this later, but yeah. when Craig talks to Lindsay, Craig does provide some more context about them that we didn't see. Right. That shows that Austin and Sierra were more than just that 11 right. days in Vermont that we just kind of had to And Lindsay was going to. on what Austin told her. Yes. And this is when we see a little bit of behind the curtain that... Yes. I'm surprised we never heard because about. Because Craig cannot be, but Craig is a justice warrior. He is, he yeah. He does not like, and so he'll bring Doesn't it like up. people. Uh, so we, let's just, let's just get into that. I mean, basically, there's not much. You need, from Danielle's side at this time, Danielle's just kind of like, she wanted to make you feel bad, and she went for the jugular. And so, and Lindsay said, yeah, I agree. That's kind of all that, that yeah. you get from Danielle and Lindsay when they went and talked. Oh, yeah. After the fight. No, I was talking about Lindsay and Craig. I know. I was just wanted oh. to finish. But with Lindsay and Craig, so Craig was like, that is some bullshit that Austin did that. And he says. Completely throws he his was a, best friend under the bus. He said, he was as official with Sierra as I am with Paige. That's a bold statement. And that's say So if that is true, then, I mean. Austin, but we already knew Austin was he, a piece of shit. I don't think he said he said it. He's like, he was. He wasn't saying he said. I know, but Craig said like in the way they react, they acted. Right. He was I, going to the city. No, she I, was that's what I'm saying. That's what he but was no, trying you're, to you're demonstrate. You're not saying, you were saying it like he said in, in Craig's <clears throat> voice. No. Austin did not say that. No, Craig said it. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but, and that was what Craig was And inferring. he holds Lindsay to the fire to it. Yeah. And I, this conversation with Lindsay, he's like, so he was like, basically, Lindsay, you hooked up with your roommate's boy. And Lindsay is trying to play the card of like, what are you talking about? It's Austin. Then this is who he is. And Craig calls bullshit because Lindsay knows, like we said, she knows exactly who Austin is. And Craig said, he's a liar. You know that about right. him. You know that he's a fucking. I love that it's just like. He said it, and Lindsay was kind of like, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, you know like, why? Everybody just knows you know Austin's why? a liar. This is different experience because it's a man telling her this. And it's not yep. the same. It's a, When a woman would say this, she would feel comp- competition yep. towards this woman, or she would feel... So it, she will take it from a man who she barely knows. Barely knows. Although Craig... This was kind of going for juggle, but he said, I'm disappointed that you aren't smart enough to see this. And uh, Lindsay immediately goes, I'm the most she intelligent. Did say that? I'm the most intelligent. That you could, she's like, I was in the top 20% of my class. I'm the most intelligent. Um, Craig's it, right. But what we, Craig's right. But what we find out, and this is kind of later on, it's not that Lindsay wasn't, not, Lindsay is smart enough to see it. I don't think Lindsay wanted she didn't want to. to. See. But let me just clarify one thing that Lindsay said. I don't know if this is truthful or not, but Lindsay said he told me he didn't want to be with her. I'm 100% believe Austin said that to her. Yeah. And, and he told Sierra the same thing about right. Lindsay. And it's so, if these two women could have just said those things to one another before all this happened. It's like none of this, none of the things from the last two weeks would have even happened. No. Oh, no. Um, All right, everybody, we're going to take a little break and we'll be right back. Uh, Hey, um, Andrea, it's Sierra. I want to apologize for ruining your party. Amanda, I want to apologize for getting wine all over you. Um, Kyle, I want to apologize for drinking your coffee that one time. (laughs) Um, Luke, I want to apologize for saying that Ross was my favorite friend on Friends. Because I know that's a dumb pick now. 
because I never seen the show because I'm like 25. She is apology. It's the, like the That's apology right. tour. Well, like we're gonna have to do for Ohio. Ross is my favorite friend. Oh come on! <laughs> He's no one's favorite. <laughs> y'all. If Ross is your favorite friend, check yourself into a psych ward. <laughs> you need therapy. You knew that would wind me up. <laughs> he is though. He's my favorite. He's nerdy. No, there are so many things. Nerdy is only a part of who Ross is. And he's lovable. Ross is terrible. He's lovable. No, you're incorrect. No. The whole thing with the pants and the powder, he's funny. Physical comedy. He is, but as a person, come on. (laughs) Wow. I did not expect this to divide us. (laughs) You're wrong. You're, you're, you're trying to wind me up. I'm, I need to move on because I'm going to get really upset about how many reasons why Ross Geller is terrible. And Ross with the monkey was so cute. That's my favorite of, of him. And he is the epitome of the man who doesn't know what he wants no. and cycles through women. He just doesn't know. He was with a woman who was a lesbian. How no, no, know? no. You're trying to wind me up. I'm not going to. I'm not going to go here. <laughs> I'm telling you all, if someone says that Ross is their favorite friend, walk away. Who's your favorite friend? You know, I go back and forth. It's probably Monica for me, and people should tell, people should walk away from Monica's too. Um, oh, no, I think Monica's lovable. But, um, uh, but Ross is the wrong friend. Ross is the wrong choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're, you're trying to wind me up. I'm not. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Ross is no one's favorite. If, if like I'm saying, Ross, if you're, Ross is your favorite, we need to, you need to think about that. Phoebe's my favorite friend. Of course she is. Yeah. She, she, that is a very, that is a very, very good choice. <laughs> I will say that. Even, even Rachel is a good choice. Although that means you're probably really fucking superficial. Rachel's my second favorite friend. Yeah. Yeah. But they did, they did wonders with that character. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Boy, that really, <laughs> that was worth it for about five minutes. I bet minutes. you Sierra, Sierra w- watched Friends late at night. She, she probably did not watch it because she was probably eight when it was airing. Um, yeah. Or like when Carl asked everyone to play volleyball. Uh, I don't think she was even eight because he said, Team 90s and Team 80s. And I went, oh, they're doing little decades. He's like, yeah, if you were born in the 80s, you're in the old group. And if you're in the 90s, you're in the young group. Yeah, uh, and we're went, older than them. I was like, where are we? There's no 70s group in here. No. <laughs> wow. They're all, they're off to the side nursing their back pain. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yep. So if Sierra was born in the 90s, Friends, well, I guess Friends did end in like 2003. Yeah. So she was... She probably, that show could have, I don't know when she was born. She would have been, she would have been like seven when Friends aired. Possibly. Yeah. She watched it later. Maybe. I don't know. I had to hear some 25-year-old. She was born, oh, she's a Christmas Eve baby. She was born December 24th. What year? 1995. So yeah, so that means she was, she was eight, eight when it when the last when episode ended. Yeah, doubt she watched a lot of it. Um. Uh, so where did wow. we get here? I no wow. no no wow. no. We're gonna get back on track. Wow. Luke I apologize. Old, Luke is the oldest one. He was born in nineteen eighty. Oh no, Kyle's eighty two, and Luke is eighty. I was gonna say Kyle is definitely the oldest. Lindsay's eighty five. I'm surprised Luke is the second youngest. Or the, sec- the second oldest. Yeah, I am too. That makes sense. He seems younger. I don't know. He seems anything to you. <sighs> Why do I right. think Luke, Luke was in his 20s? Because you wanted him to be? Maybe. What's the next thing? So we're talking about volleyball. So they go play ball. Y'all, not much happens. They just go play volleyball. They, they're on the beach. The hurricane's coming. Yada, yada, yada. I think what you, the only thing that does happen from this is that Sierra and Danielle have a talk. Yeah, and this was, 
was a this good talk. Was, I think both of them were pretty... Danielle kind of needed to say what she did about her for her own boundaries, saying this wasn't okay that you did this. I'm surprised and Danielle was so calm, as angry as Danielle she was been, because she was maybe she was just drunk, but she was like raging at Sierra, I like think, looking almost looking for a well, defensive I fight. Think this is interesting. You talked about a justice warrior uh, before. I think that's what Danielle is in her own way. Oh, I agree with for that. Lindsay. I agree, and with that. I think Lindsay sees. Uh, Danielle sees Lindsay as a very specific type and knows Lindsay's faults very well. She doesn't and know Sierra at all. No, she doesn't know Sierra at all. And I think that's why it's it's such a weird, and I brought it up over and over again, but the age, the, this, this generational divide between this cast is going to eventually, uh, is going to tear them apart. I re- unless the older ones move on. Which I and, think is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I It'll just be a really messy and, house. And this is this is something that was really f- interesting to me that I that I that I was thinking about is that with the conversation that Maya was having with um, with Sierra, and the one with Danielle was having with Sierra, is that this is a amalgamated friend group of people now. When it started out, it was a friend group of people who all knew one another. In the summer house. Mm-hmm. And they all tangentially. Then we started putting people in there who were who were tangential friends. And casting started saying they were Paige's friend. Yeah, because do we do we honestly we knew we knew Luke was Luke was Sierra was Luke's friend. But yeah. they really hadn't dated that much. It almost seems like Sierra was cast. Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. And for so sure. As soon as you start doing that, yes, they get ingratiated in with the rest of the friend, cast, but they're not friends. Luke, or Lindsay, Kyle, and uh, uh, Carl. Carl, even if they weren't best of friends, they become really good friends after five fucking seasons. And because they were friends before. Right. So this is a friend group that shares the same values. Sierra does not share the same set of values of friend respect with Lindsay, Danielle, and and neither does Paige. Yes. So somewhere along the lines, that because that's the thing with the friend group, you do have At the same. At least with them. Yes. Whereas Paige and Sierra and like Maya have a whole different set of exactly. their own values. They're, yeah. all, they're, they're more for their subgroup of friends. Yeah. So that's why it's that whole thing about None has any allegiance towards any, and and Sierra by g- being upset, she's like, "You should know as my friend that it was wrong to do this to me." And and that's why Maya was bringing up she's never going to be able to do that. And Danielle says, "You know, she said." D- Danielle even says she doesn't say it, but she does it with her because she says, "I'm trying to have a friendship with you," meaning I don't know you. No. And then later, Danielle says when they kind of shore everything up Danielle says well I just want you both to exist in the house together right they don't expect them to even be friends and why would they be friends and this is what's interesting about how what the, how this show has they have nothing in common has kind of grown now we have we have different kinds of people in this house who we used to not have and the conversations don't get deep they used to not get deep it was just about partying now we're were expected there are people in the house like Sierra who wants to have good relationships with everybody in the house even though it's not really feasible to do such mm-hmm. because there's no emotional currency I'm telling you older people are I'm telling you they, they're they gonna have to make a it's actually been a better season of Summer House I agree. better than last um, but this old guard's gotta go yeah it's time for them to leave it's and it's interesting because I'll be interested to see what happens without them. I think the first season you, will probably be pretty wonky. Yeah. Would you count Amanda in the old guard? Uh, by proxy, yeah, because yeah. she'll leave with Kyle. Yeah, she'll have to. Um, I think. Um, I think it'll be a, probably be a, wi- a wonky season. The first one of mm-hmm. figuring out probably kind of the way Winter House felt. Yeah. Or even not as that was not great, but then I think the season, the next season, it would probably be back to messier summer house. Yeah, 
I, I agree. I think that has to happen because I think the show is very different now than when it started six years ago. Yes. Otherwise, it's, we're a very different time than we were six years ago. Well, because also they it's interesting how the people they brought in, I think they maybe did it on purpose or casting. Five years ago, everybody was in their late 20s. So now they're in their mid 30s. Mm-hmm. That's a big jump in your life. Yeah. Y'all, you, you change a lot in your 20s, but unless you live like in small town, but if you're in a big city, this is just something I, I think. I'm not saying it's gospel. Small towns is different. If you live in Ardmore, Oklahoma, Lone Grove, Greenville, South Carolina, who you are when you're 20. Don't lump in Ardmore with Greenville. But, That's a bigger town. But think about it. Small towns, though. From when you're 20 until you're 30, there's a big difference and a lot of change in your Amen. life. Amen. Yep. When you live in a big city, except for like career-wise, a lot doesn't change for you. A lot of people still don't have kids in their 20s. Right. You're still going. It's not a weird thing like in Ardmore, if you're 28 years old going to bars, people are asking, what are you What's doing? What's wrong? If you live in New York City, you go to bars right. when you're 28, 29. It's, it's a normal thing to do, and that's where they were in their life. Mid thirties. That's when you start. Once you hit thirty five, in bigger cities, in bigger cities. Once you hit thirty five, things start to change, mm-hmm. and so that's what's happening. It's they're just aging out, and we don't want to see y'all if they don't if they don't get them out of this house. Two years from now, we're already listening to fucking Amanda and Kyle talking about a goddamn <laughs> prenup. Two years from now, we're going to be having Carl talking to Luke about where she should invest his mutual funds in his fucking IRA. You're not. And we don't want to see that. You're so right, and this should be preached. <laughs> this is to, not what we want to see on Summer House, but it's going to gonna the, happen. To the back of the church. I totally agree it's with gonna you. It's going to happen, especially now that Lindsay is sober. With yep. Carl? I can't imagine it. I don't want to see a sober Lindsay on Summer Me either. House. Me either. I want to see a drunk, activated Lindsay, which is what we're going to see next week. Oh, when she's, she talks got per- to Amanda. she's got pink and purple hair. Because she hates Amanda more than anyone. Because she really Am- does. Because Amanda has Kyle's love and affection, and Lindsay will never get it. <laughs> I still say... That that uh, the only Lindsay has contempt for every woman in that house except for Danielle. Yes, like she just does. Yes, and it's interesting because if you watch Summer House from the beginning, you guys, Lindsay was the guy's girl, and she didn't get along with the Workers Twins either. She didn't get along with any of the girls except for Danielle. Maybe occasionally some, but Hannah and her were like oil and water, and. But Lindsay, because Lindsay... You mean oil and vinegar. As you said earlier, (laughs) oil and vinegar. But because Lindsay is great reality TV, she is kept on going. And now we're at a time where it's almost untenable. We can't be in the house because there are personalities who are not like Lindsay. We've got personalities in the middle because Sierra... Not Sierra. Paige and Lindsay have similar characteristics in some ways. Yeah. They both like to stir shit. Sierra's not that way. No, um, no, no. Whereas several years from now, let's say Carl and Lindsay work out, they get married, they start having kids. I would watch that spinoff yeah. of her, their reality life because I would know what to exp- I know, right. okay, this is going to be a reality show right. of people in their mid-30s navigating life and children right. and whatever. Right. But not in a place called Summer House. And it's interesting to see this new guard. Paige is a reality star. She is. Who is th- who of the new guard is a reality star? Sierra's getting there. Sierra's grown a l- I mean, she is, but getting mad and throwing a drink at somebody helps you no, be a that's reality true. star. It does. No, that's true. But I'm but what what's the other side to her? Th- that that's a lot of what we've seen. We've it, a lot She's of it, got this anger. Season, a lot of it's been wrapped up with Austin. Yeah, this season. So I'd love we to need, see her. I'd love to see her have a chance at something that's and it was not with about Luke last season. Yes, we need to. She needs to have a hot hub summer. Yeah, that's what we need next summer from Sierra. I just yeah, I want her to be. I think for a lot of reality show stars who are women. You either have to be in the middle of that kind of drunk, messy, uh, kind of um, 
like uh, you feel bad about yourself, said, or or the very strong woman types. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if she hits the right combinations, but because we haven't really seen her in any way but this. Because Paige has such good lines. When she said that one line, somebody said, do you want a tattoo? And she said, why do I want to put exactly. a bumper, bumper sticker that's on a, a Bentley? That's a reality star line. That's a reality star yeah, line. Yeah, and it's... I think she's definitely an ensemble person, but I don't know if she could carry anything. But that's okay. Reality stars need ensemble people, and they still do just fine. No. You, you mean, so it's okay to be an ensemble you need person? Those, because I don't necessarily, and I would, uh, I, I would argue and say Kyle on his own is not a reality star. Amanda on her own are not a reality star. I would disagree. I think Kyle on his own is a reality star. See, he, he, can, he can do fine on Watch What Happens Live. Yeah, I guess that's true. It's just they work off of each other so well. No, that's true. But anyway. before Amanda, Kyle was still a star. I guess I haven't seen those seasons. Okay. So, all right, let's move on. Uh, okay, so real, I just want to say they all dress up. The girls, all uh, team 90s, all dresses up as team 80s. And I just want to say... We that's much go, funnier. We need to go through all of them, but... Andrea as fucking Lindsay it's made really me good. fucking laugh my head off. It was really, really, really funny. That's There's nothing really to say about the ba- the the volleyball game. But besides, they only went to five. No, it's fine. We don't. Even, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. But we are. But I'm saying it's eleven, right? I don't play volleyball. I don't know. We don't play volleyball. <laughs> we don't play volleyball in Oklahoma. Really? No. Not women's really volleyball is a very competitive sport. I think in there South probably Carolina. are people who play volleyball, but not in my. School. Y'all didn't have high school volleyball. No. We oh, were it's small huge. School. We had tennis. We didn't even have tennis. We had a we had, very competitive uh, a ten- high school volleyball a tennis game. court, but it was on the. It was on. Uh, they the were always old, better than our football team. Really? No, we just had football, baseball, basketball. My sister in law was a world, not world champion. She was a great volleyball player. No, no, we didn't. Even when I played on the tennis courts, it's in the old cafetorium parking lot, so it turned your balls black. No, it was indoor. Asphalt. Indoor. No, we didn't have any of that. <laughs> it was a poor school. <laughs> But God forbid they had you in a mascot suit. Well, yeah. Because you got to spend money on the football team. We had a raise. I know. That was a $750 Longhorn outfit. Wow. We had to raise that in the booster club. Anyway. Go sell hamburgers out the Hardy Murphy Coliseum during the fair. We need to move on. Uh, so they, uh, Amanda, there's one little thing I want to talk about where Amanda is talking to Craig. And he's like, you know. He, uh, the, the, he's like, do you see this turning up to a relationship? He's like, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't see potential walking down the altar. Why would I do this? And she's like, oh, it's so sweet. Why would I do this? And of course she goes right to Paige. I don't want to tell you. Because you know. But I'm going to tell you. Yeah. And, and of course she says it in a way that's not exactly what he said. She's like, he could see going down the altar with you. (laughs) She kind of makes it more. When really what Craig said, why would I be with someone who I don't dream of licking my smooth butthole? Exactly. Forever? Exactly. Um, okay. Real quick, because I don't want to talk about this too much because it's just not – it. he ends up with Lindsay anyway, so it's a moot point. Um, but we're going to talk about Carl talks to Kyle, but also he later talks to his mother. I think I'm just going to kind of put these into one little talking point. Carl's not that into McKenzie. Full no, stop, y'all. McKenzie is not the one for him. McKenzie's not the one for him. Um, he's taking it slow, which is good because the year of sobriety and all that. But as his mom just kind of laid it out, she's There's like, no spark. if you're really into someone, you know. When you know, you know. And I think for the most part, that's true. Um, Do we want to talk about the Sierra Lindsay conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just have it. Carl talked to Kyle. On the beach. And so I was just kind of bookending yeah. that. But yeah, let's talk about Sierra so, and Lindsay. This is interesting. Well, oh, I, well, actually, no, first, let's, can we talk about Lindsay and Danielle? Because that happened first. Because Lindsay, this is a day after, and Lindsay, Lindsay, Danielle went to Lindsay and said, yeah. I talked to Sierra. Yeah. And Lindsay said, oh, how did I go? How did I go? <laughs> and this is where I call, I got to give, I got to give, pro, I forget, and you're right. And Lynn and Danielle is right that she you're right. She is a justice warrior because she says to Lindsay, did you want to hurt her? Right. And Lindsay's like, I didn't realize 
I didn't realize what was going on. I didn't know any of these things. She, Lindsay is completely shirking responsibility. Mm-hmm. And Daniel said, but did you love that? Yeah. And they show all the... And then we never see Lindsay's answer to that. No. They don't. So I don't know what Lindsay said. I thought that was an editing fail. Yeah. Because they just kind of leave it left up to us. But I appreciated that what I was trying to... When we talked about it, I was like... I get it. This is a lot on Sierra. Sierra's being like way involved in this, but at the same time, like Lindsay's needling no, her, and she knows we, c- we could see it all happening. But that's My, what was I'm saying. Not with you. I'm saying yeah. that was frustrating to when, like at first, when people Danielle said and even Amanda were like, "Well, that's just Lindsay," and I'm like, "No, right? She's being a little cruel here." I think it was my my big question was. How often does Lindsay think about Sierra? No, and I agree. It was just and, validating for Danielle to be like... But yeah. And you, I I think yeah. there probably was a little bit where she was enjoying uh, making out with a guy who had been making out with uh, arguably the most beautiful woman in the house. Yes. Oh, for sure. And But again, it goes back to... But the vo- oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say though, I don't think that there is the malice in trying to screw her though. I think it's all about her and what she could get. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, and it's so not that she was trying to be. Uh, that she was. It's an important distinction, but it is very. Um, uh, it's schadenfreude like I agree I was just, yeah. she is getting joy from someone else's pain yes and she was like Daniel said loving that and, I, and that was so that I was like okay I wasn't crazy but let's talk about now let's talk about the Sierra Lindsay conversation and what are your thoughts on no, that no it was just this was interesting where uh, Sierra basically says I wanted you to know where I was coming from I was hurt I thought you were doing it um, intentionally and uh, to me, she felt wronged by Lindsay. And Lindsay, it's interesting. She's explaining it in that way. And it's you, you can see that Lindsay is in her head going, what is she even talking about? Because I wasn't even I wasn't even thinking about this when we were doing this. I was so in my own world. And it went, Lindsay doesn't think deep about things. No. And yeah. when she does, it is only with people who she has comedy with or it's and, also about her Lindsay yeah is deep about her and or a certain a certain sense of community with she yeah. has no community with sierra no and and it's interesting that and Lindsay says look uh, the same line she says austin and i have always had this thing and blah 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 and and the same line she always says it's this friendship and 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 that it's pissed off my my boyfriends it's pissed off his girlfriends and if i was sierra i would just say and why do you think that is and do you understand you just said it's pissed off his girlfriends and pissed off if you're aware of that could you maybe see my point she didn't need that because Lindsay followed that with but i'm sorry for my part in this right and that's all sierra needed to hear and you know what then, as soon as she said that, because Sierra finally said, you know what? I'm going to step back from Austin because we both realize. And then this was great. And they did not bury the hatchet, but they just both agreed, let's move forward. Because that's the best outcome that can come from these two people, y'all. They don't want to be friends. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. That's yeah. That's okay. That's okay. It's okay. Um, real, this isn't like a – I just said I liked it with what we've seen – there's a very cute. They're all in New York, and Oliver and Meyer. I like, always are hate on a date. these. I always hate. I hate, these. but they Oliver and Meyer are on a date, and God, he looks hot. Did I fast forward? It was this? literally if you if you fart, you missed it. I completely it was like, missed it. On then. his phone, he was like, "Hey, we're hanging out," and she's like sitting by him on a couch. I must have fast forward. Yeah, through this. so they're like still dating. They're on a little date in New York. He looked really hot. She looked adorable. So Good. There you go. I, I I I wish he wasn't a chef. I do too. But I, I worry I, that for I, her. I'm, I'm I'm glad that she's having some kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it would be nice for her, you know. Yeah, get like out of a that. Teacher or something. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. um, I call a little bit of I I again it kind of goes back to what you say. I don't think they're kind of like I want I want them producers of this show. 
I really like Sierra. I want them to find something for her to do, like you were saying. Yeah. And I think her meeting with another nurse and deciding to potentially go back <laughs> into nursing, it just felt fraudacity it to felt me. felt ridiculous. Because... Yo, this woman's not going back into nursing. She was... <laughs> and I don't blame her. And I'm me not saying... Me either. Any, she was a, an ICU nurse in New York. And I liked how the nurse said, well, do you want to go back to ICU? And Sierra's like, yeah, I don't think so. That was kind of a lot. Because she talked about just yeah. you know, all these nurses and a lot of you listen to us. The tra- the traumatic well, shit you have seen, but especially I, in the I, last two years, you're tired. I think everything that, that she was meeting this nurse in scrubs at this place. And Sierra's like, she's in her like beautiful little outfit with yeah. these frilly green sleeves. And the nurse shows up in scrubs. And she's like, yeah, I'll have the avocado, blah, 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 something. And the nurse is like, granola. Granola. <laughs> that, granola just, just me. that just I'm tells tired. you... Sierra's not there. She's doing commercials for Bravo and closets. Yeah. There's no way she's she's not going back to water budget. It's, I think that she knows nursing is it's it is. It's such an admirable career. But I don't think anyone would fault her. It's it's like what I feel about nurses and a lot of teachers right now. Yeah. Like I don't fault teachers and nurses for wanting to leave a very yeah. stressful job. Um, that they don't feel supported at. Right. That I don't blame, I can't blame someone for that. I think I would almost believe her kind of going back to nursing after this time had I not seen her do appearances everywhere and do commercials for things. Because that's a lot less stressful and, than taking someone off a yeah. ventilator. And, and so I, I, would, I would believe it more. I just don't buy it. Yeah, yeah. I don't, uh, yeah. Um, oh, I don't have anything else except for the little couples therapy session. I mean, this this is interesting because this was this is when Kyle and Amanda, you kind of see them. You watch Amanda give Kyle validation, which he desperately craves. He does for this, and not saying, not kind of, kind of talking over him about something. And you watch him saying, thank you so much for doing that. And so they, they may be making little steps, but Kyle's still talking about the prenup. And it's interesting. Now Kyle's moved into, this is an uncomfortable conversation. Amanda is still in the emotional part of it. She's like, it's like you're, it's like you're planning for a divorce. It's like bad luck. And, and I agree. I think this prenup idea is stupid, but... You can see that Amanda still sees it as a rejection. Which is interesting because when I look at the, I think the prenup, and I know you, you probably do too, the prenup is stupid to me from a logistical standpoint. Yeah. If she, like we said, she built this well with him. It just makes no sense. And all, all she has to do is go further and say, no, we can, we, can, we can kind of observe what I helped you do, and we can both leave with what we came to the company with. That exactly. with, and so I still call for audacity. Yeah, on it. it still feels it still feels my fake. favorite part is as a therapist uh, or ex ex still therapist, but don't see clients anymore. Boy, I use this all the time when I had a client who really who really needed me to be their therapist. Mm-hmm. And I would say and but they didn't. They stopped coming to sessions. Y'all, I'm telling you this now. If your therapist says to you. <clears throat> So, I haven't seen you, and we fell out of the rhythm of our work. That means the therapist is saying, you need my fucking help, and you need to come <laughs> weekly. I used to use that. I don't, it's, at the same time, I don't know if you can impose that on someone. I would want someone to want to put in the work, when, I guess. That's the way of saying, uh, yeah. it, it depends on the client. Some clients they're not in a space but literally i would always have this happens a lot in therapy is people will start with a therapist they'll do well they'll be making inroads inroads and then there will be some big revelation yeah and then you won't see him for a while and then because people feel shame yeah or embarrassment they don't want to go back to their therapist. And so they have this big breakthrough revelation and then they won't go to therapy for a month. Mm. And so then we're backtracking and then we have to, which is fine. 
it is what it is. Everything we bring in the room, we'll bring it in the room. But it is that so it's very sim. Those type of clients are the type of clients that would get close in a relationship, and when they got closest, would run away. It's interesting when I talk about. I never talk about things in terms of backtracking for people because I believe that if you if you if you realize something. It's still there. It's not going to go away. And that's the what. Part, yeah. um, and you can talk about our relationship, yeah. right? They'll but all go what back I what I um, what Google I like to say out. is They're let's just dust that off. Slack. Like yeah. that you don't and actually because people are always whether it's life coaching or vocal coaching. They're like, oh, I've gotten so much worse. And I said, you know, the things that we break through, we have, we still have. We can be reminded of them or dust that off. Summer that's the show. That's the show, everybody. Come see us on the road this weekend or next weekend. Who needs Easter? Uh, right? To, who needs uh, a good Friday? You know what? What are you going to do? Eat your fish that sandwich and then come see us. And take your Cadbury eggs and stuff them up your ass. Uh, or give them to me. I like them. They're disgusting. Tell it off. Y'all, we got we to gotta stop. We'll see you next week. Uh, remember, though, if you... Um, if you are, you know, picking up shards of glass off of a floor and it, and you look at red wine spilled everywhere and it, it looks like a bloody crime scene and someone is just concerned about their white pants, the best thing for you to do is, uh, to look around and just say what poodle? Well, that one went nowhere. It went nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. Who's Tracy? Who's Tracy? Who's Tracy? <laughs>